Hello, my name is Helena Meloni. I am coming from Helsinki, Finland, to the 20th anniversary of the Nitra Festival, theater festival in Slovakia. Uh, I have been to Slovakia a few times before, uh, to the New Drama Festival. I have even uh, built up a program of Finnish theatre for Bratislava. Uh, but now one of the reasons why I really wanted to come to Nitra is because I was invited to the Nitra Advisory Board to uh, tell something about the theatre I like and I would see, like to see in Nitra. But also because uh, my good old friend Kama Mironovich Ginkas uh, came with his wonderful show Medea from Moscow. Uh, I already saw Medea in Moscow and now it was very interesting to see it in, uh, in the surrounding, in, in, in a completely uh, another surrounding, another country, another culture. And uh, what really surprises me and what I'm really happy for is, is that there is so many young people in the audience in Nitra. It seems that this festival is very important for uh, Slovakia for, and it's also important for the Central European context because all the people I have been talking with say that it, this is the place you have to go. Because this year you can see a mixture of Eastern European new uh, interesting performances. They always bring some new uh, performances we haven't seen before in uh, in, in, in the West, more Western Europe and in the Northern Europe especially and uh, also usually always uh, bring something from Russia. Uh, Russia is something very important to me. It's half of my life mm -hmm. because uh, in 1978 I was invited to translate for um, uh, Tostanogov when he was, um, he was uh, directing in the, our National Theatre in Helsinki. He was directing Ostrovsky and uh, Ostrovsky is also one of the big names in, in, my, in my life. I love his, uh, love his comedies, tragedies, whatever you call, and I really think he's uh, worth the name of uh, Shakespeare of the Russian theatre. But about Ginkas, uh, 25 years ago I met Kama for the first time. I had just worked with Mr. Lev Dodin, who is one of the big names also in the Russian theatre, and I, my stupid young girl, I, I <laughs> called Dodin and asked him, well, I am, I have to, I, now I have a new uh, acquaintance, I have to start uh, interpreting completely unknown Russian director, his name is Kamaginkas. Do you know anything about him? <laughs> <laughs> and Dodin, the uh, really wonderful person he is, told me, hmm, he thought for a minute and then he said, uh, well, Helena, Kamaginkas is one of, the, one of the very interesting, the very big names in the Russian theatre. He wasn't that known at that time yet because he didn't uh, have a possibility to do so many shows in, his, in, so, in the Soviet Union at that time yet. Uh, but he said, he is not one of the most uh, easy persons to work with, but knowing you, Helena, you won't have any trouble working with him. <laughs> so this was a very diplomatic answer from uh, another big uh, director. And um, so he reassured me, and I wasn't that afraid, because I remember starting working with Tostanogov. I had a terrible migraine <laughs> the day we started. <laughs> and uh, so I had gone through a few of those difficult situations before, so I, s I, I thought maybe, maybe that, that could be okay. And I must say that uh, working with, with uh, Kama Ginkas has been uh, the big love story of my life in theatre of course, because I have been able to walk him through his so-called Finnish period, uh, working in five uh, different um, directions that, uh, or five different productions that he made in Finland, starting with Palata Nomer Sest, the award number, number six, six yeah. uh, and ending with Macbeth in the, in the City Theatre of Helsinki, and working with both Swedish actors, uh, Swedish-speaking actors in Finland, and the Finnish-speaking actors, uh, and you must understand that we have two very different theatrical cultures and two completely different languages in our country. They are both official languages, but they represent completely different uh, traditions. And Kama worked with both of them. And I must say, maybe he was more at home in the Swedish tradition because hmm. maybe it was closer to his own. He always said it's closer to his own roots from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and. Uh, uh, 
I really want, I, 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 after reading the book that you, John, made together with, with Karma, I can completely agree with everything in that because it is a, a portrait of, of Karma Ginkas mm -hmm. as a director and mm -hmm. also as a person, mm -hmm. as a person that deeply affected my view of life mm -hmm. and uh, my way of thinking and my becoming a theatrical person. I'm going to exaggerate now when I say this um, because, of course, you and Finland did not make Karma Ginkas, but to a certain extent, Finland did yes. make Karma Ginkas yes. because Karma was having difficulty finding work. He was working infrequently in in Russia, um, and when he came back from what was it about three or four years? He were, he was in Finland almost all the time for three yes, or four years, yes. wasn't he? Long period. He came back and boom, he just, <laughs> in the early 90s in, in Moscow, yes. he just started to have major production after major production yeah. after major production. Yes. And so, I'm, I'm just, did you, did you feel that happening as you were watching did, him doing that? I did, I did. I did feel him uh, being very enthusiastic about his work. I, I could see him growing. I could see him becoming, you know, he he, he came as a peripheric, as you say, a Malchik's uh Direvni, -huh. <laughs> and a, a boy from the, from, from the country. A, from the country, even that he was working in Moscow. Yeah. But uh, we know, all of us know that Moscow is a, a big <laughs> It's a big village. <laughs> a village. <laughs> <laughs> and he came to this peripheric country in Finland where he actually, um, you know, um, he had had difficulties in Russia because he has a terrible character. We all know he has a terrible character. <laughs> but he is the director who is ready to put 150% in his work. And he will also always uh, want that from everybody else mm -hmm. around him. Mm -hmm. And that is always something that clashes. In, in Russia he had big problems with the technical side of uh, with the technicians. He said they are lazy, they are not interested, they are not, you know, it's this and that and this and that. And uh, he came to Finland where we have really, you know, uh, peaceful minded, good, high professional technicians who take care of everything, uh, but they don't talk too much. So he actually didn't understand the culture, nobody's saying anything. <laughs> and what, what, why do it the answer? I want this, I want that, I want... I said, they hear everything. I'm, I'm <laughs> interpreting everything. Just take it easy. Mm -hmm. In two, three days they had made everything. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of, he was, during these d years, he kind of started to believe that theater is a collective uh, way of uh, doing art. And these people around him in Finland are committed to the work and believe him and they believe in his visions and they are ready to work for them but they are not maybe as you know uh, uh, expression they have some so not so much expression in mm -hmm. their doing they're just you know doing and I also learned from Ginkas at that time that he really is the one who um, if he sees uh, somebody who is really good in his profession, no matter if it's uh, um, somebody who cleans the floors or uh, you know uh, a high technician or something, he really he really is fascinated by the art of of uh, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Yeah. And so um, I think he he had very good. Um, he started to believe in people around him, and it gave him a piece of concentrating on what he wanted to say. And all the actors were very committed to him because they understood he is um, a genius. And even if it's so difficult to work with him, they were very patient with him. So I think he, he was given this peace. Also, Finland is quite a, a peaceful country and he enjoyed, he really said, I'm going back to my youth because it reminds me of the Baltic states where the pace of life is more easy than in Moscow mm -hmm. and you, you, you can see the nature.